Hi Conway. So I'm looking at this uh, new iteration. I think it works a lot better than before. It's a lot clearer, much le much less uh, unnecessary action there. Uh, there is certainly room for improvement. So let's go ahead and find what is it that we can do here to improve this animation. Uh, I've seen that someone already left notes. Some of them, I think, um, I mean, those I've seen anyway make sense. So the first thing that I've noticed in here, which is a bit bizarre to me, is um, the the arc of this uh, uh, of this arm. Okay, so um, in one pose you are completely changing the position of the arm and its silhouette. So you're telling the audience that they have to recognize a complete change of character and silhouette there in in just one pose, which might be a bit too steep. And plus, the next pose you're going up that way so I wonder if instead you could decide that in this pose you could have perhaps the elbow to lead and the arm going somewhere over here so it would be this kind of action okay this kind of action right now you are doing you're doing something like this so you're opening up and then closing I think so but what about doing this kind of action with the with the elbow track the elbow leading okay and this way you wouldn't go too extreme to the right you would keep a more similar silhouette hopefully because you're not going to uh, show us this big of a u si shape in there inverted u but it's going to be a bit more i mean it's a reverse curve that's granted but it's a bit more similar to what you had earlier on and the arc will be a bit more contained you're not going to go out that way and then come back and I don't think you need to lift it this much now I think you can keep it a bit more a bit flatter for as long as the curve is visible you should be fine and then in here I'm not quite um, I'm not quite convinced that it's a good idea to transfer the silhouette of this arm which used to be an inverted U or a C or whatever you want to call it to a straight line I don't think it's a good idea because we now know this character has that silhouette and now you're changing it again so you silhouette is an important principle of animation you gotta think about it all the time so you need to decide whether you want this arc whether you want this to be an inverted U like this for instance and show us the elbow do not remove the elbow because what we know about this character is that there is a shoulder, an elbow, and then there's a blade. That's what we know about it, right? If all of a sudden your silhouette becomes just a blade, I know it sounds stupid and possibly uh, trivial, but that's not the same character anymore, okay? It's a different character, so you want to show us the elbow. I mean, remember we have seen this this character now for 21 frames, le less, no, less, uh, less, of, less than a second if you think about it. You don't want to change the silhouette of this character three times in less than a second and, and ask an audience to believe that's the same character. I know it's the same model, but we just, we have, we have spent less than one second. So it's too early, I think, to make all these changes of silhouette. And then in here, similarly, you want to decide if your uh, shape is this way or if it's the opposite way but the only way you don't want to have it is a straight line like you have in here yeah I know there's a bit of a line in here a bit of a gap but it's essentially this reads like a straight line again so now one second into your your uh, one second into your animation you showed us for one fifth of a second between 21 and 25 more or less you showed us a different silhouette of the same character which is a bit too much I think and also you're making a straight line in here so again you're breaking this silhouette remember show us a tiny bit of the silhouette at all times so that we know what we're looking at okay so that's for the uh, arm and uh, it's a bit strange that the two arms feel like they're moving by the same pace between poses I think you want to have one arm moving a bit more than the other probably the one that swings first but I'm not quite sure about that as far as let's see the others um, yeah the swing of the arm I think one thing that would be really cool about this turning back would be if the guy 
were still having his arms uh, in the direction of the box and then he would turn to the next box like hmm and then he turns and it would be super cool if he did something like stuff like this you know the kind of growl that <laughs> creatures do in visual effects movies so because I feel like I feel that in here there's a very big difference of posing a very big change of posing but it doesn't seem I mean it would be cool if you were a bit more justified perhaps but it's just a bonus if you have time you can do that otherwise it would work anyway so now let's see the swing of the arms um, yeah, the jump is a bit underwhelming on the way forward, and again, I think it's a problem of silhouette uh, um, as well. But there's a problem of silhouette in the foreground box to begin with, because now you're breaking the silhouette of the background box by placing the foreground box uh, that close to one another. I think in here, you, you really want to separate the two things so that the foreground box is a bit more foreground and doesn't bother anything else, okay? Because right now, we don't even know this is a box. I mean, yeah, of course we know. But the thing is, we have less than one second to figure it out while someone else is moving on screen. So it would be easier if there was a clear difference of silhouette in there and, and if the two silhouettes weren't occluding one another, okay? Now, if we go uh, for this jump instead, one thing that I don't quite understand is why you go from having the arms closed and again in here you're kind of breaking the silhouette if you could have a clearer silhouette it would be nicer uh, why you open up the arms so much in here and again break the silhouette and then you keep it there without any motion at all and you just move the body and this is something that happens every now and then in your animation it feels like you forget that the the character is, is a it's a organic an organic element uh, being made of several parts and every now and then you just move one part so you don't have to move everything a lot but it's still it's a concerto of movement right every part of the of the orchestra uh, plays its role so what I'm not understanding very clearly is why do we open up the arms in here and we stay there and then we close them again and then we close for the anticipation and then it feels like you're already opening up this guy. So it feels like you're you're closing, opening, closing, and opening again. I'm, I'm just not. It feel it reads a bit a bit confusing. I don't know what's going on there. I mean, uh, I don't argue it might lead to good motion, but in terms of acting, I don't know what's the purpose of this. So I think if you if you aren't clear about why you're doing that, you should probably stick to a very basic anticipation and then we jump and we just open up during the jump rather than keep on changing the silhouette and it's just diluting from the action there uh, unless you have a strong message that you want to talk about in which case just tell me and I will see what we can do about it so uh, the guy jumps yeah in here the problem is that this right arm is constantly changing position throughout the jump so it, it becomes very uh, difficult to read I would probably at this stage just try to keep it um, uh, closer to the body or even closer if you can than now and then just open up maybe at this stage a bit more so that we can see the arms swinging open right now we just don't have enough frames to appreciate this winging the swinging open of the open of the arms okay so that's for the arms. As far as the body is concerned, I think it works a lot better than the previous time. Uh, there is one moment which I'm not really understanding, and it happens right here on 42. See what the back does at 42. You see that very big motion there, super fast, very big, and why? We don't know. I don't know why that is happening. It's a very big motion, the chest is not participating, it's just moving one to one, or so it seems, with the root, which is bizarre because it feels like you're moving the whole character one to one. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I think that big motion should really happen here when we go into the anticipation, right? I don't know why we are doing that big motion there, it just seems like a very big chunk of motion there, which 
doesn't feel justified okay so you really need to think about that why you're doing that right now it doesn't quite feel uh, very motivated and as far as the jump is concerned I think in here if you look at I'm looking at this side of the screen um, if you jump one you one thing you can do is you can probably lower the butt a lot more so that you will that will get get you a nicer line of action yeah I know that perhaps that's not immediately immediately noticeable in here in the camera but trust me it's going to make a difference there and plus it's going to give you the advantage that as you jump you're going to be able to do the overlap with the with the two parts of the body okay something like this while earlier now it feels like you're doing this so a single rigid body uh, moving up so I would really try to lower the button here and just uh, make a nicer line of action there so that w in a, so that in this last pose you will have the butt moving a lot higher up and we will clearly see the butt moving at a different pace than the rest of the body which will make for a lot more organic creature animation right there and I would really try to have the head rotated one way or another but not parallel to the floor same thing a bit with the chest like give give this guy a more dynamic um, look because right now it's it's a bit uh, flat I think um, then apart from that this is pushing I think perhaps in um, on 113 you can still keep the front leg a bit more backward um, and maybe the back leg can come out this way somewhere over there um, I don't quite know why on the last pose you are extending the front right leg that doesn't I mean unless there is reason uh, but I don't quite understand it. If you have to, if you want to ex extend it, just just keep it a bit more extended here on the first pose, and then recoil as you fly forward. And similarly, I would need to see the 3D view of this. But um, look at this leg that looks like like this, right? Look at that, and see where it goes from the top view. You see that your jump is your jump is pushing you in this direction more or less and your leg is moving in that direction so I think in there there's a story that needs to be investigated because if the guy is flying this way there's no reason why the leg should go this way okay and this is why we use these cameras you see how easy it is to find out I mean, you look at something you feel like oh this is quite strange is it not and then you see that it moves in a totally unrelated direction to the rest of the body and mm, I mean, there may be there may well be an acting choice behind it I don't know that but it seems to me that just by looking at the general motion of the character that's a direction that doesn't work and other thing that I don't quite understand is how when you push you push in this direction and when you fly you fly in this direction so you're pushing this way and flying this way that doesn't make any sense I mean not physically anyway so you want to make sure in creature animation this is really important you want to make sure that this in, that in 3D this makes sense that, that if you push in one direction you go in that direction because if you animate something like this from camera yeah I, I don't argue it might look nice in the end okay but if you really want to have this animation brought up to the next level you need to consider these factors because that's what makes really good animation what it is the attention to the detail if you have a character pushing diagonally this way and then flying the other way without wings that starts to become a little bit of a problem and you may not notice it in here necessarily I mean as in you may not know what's wrong with it but you may but it, it, you will look at it and think oh there's something odd but you don't quite know what it is and and you will never find out until you go and check this guy and this guy okay that's why I asked for them and I think it's a good thing that we have them here so thank you for that so now you really want these two fit these two poses to work I think what I would do if I were you I would work on this last pose I would work on the push pose and then I would delete uh, the translation of the body in the middle 
and I will see what interpolation Maya gives me and make a breakdown based on that. And then we just try to make it a nice looking arc and some straight line for the most part consistent with what what physics would require from you in here. Okay, because right now I'm a bit confused and I think I am right in being confused. It's really strange to see this character uh, being completely off balance on that side and then pushing that way and then flying the opposite way. That's really strange. So uh, let me check the steps very quickly. So the steps in here are a bit bizarre in a way because um, you are shifting the weight onto this leg so it seems it's not very much like so in here because in here from the top the, the weight seems to go on the back legs on the hind legs and while you have the weight in there on the left on the right leg of the character your 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 leg is moving but that doesn't quite make sense if the weight is here on the left where it should be I suppose and then you can't move this thing or you wouldn't want to okay so in my opinion that should go down that leg should go down earlier than this pose so that the guy can push the monster can push on that leg if need be and and I think this leg should go down before it's something you can fix in splining I suppose but at adding back breakdown may help in here should go down before you swing the arm completely because otherwise you will have you will find yourself in splining having a leg and, a, and an arm that move by the same amount but what you want the audience to see is the arm right so if you start moving another limb by the same amount of the arm then people will look at the leg and some other some other people will look at the arm and half of the audience will be confused or rather you will lose half of the audience you you will want them to look at this thing but they will be looking at the leg which is not what you want maybe they're not confused anyway but you know I mean if you are directing your animation you want to direct the I mean you want to direct the audience there right so that should have the most spacing. So these guys should come down earlier. Then, um, as you swing that way, you could perhaps lift the other leg because anyway, the, the momentum and is moving the body to that side. So you can definitely lift the other leg now and then go down. In here, yeah, when I do locomotion of any kind, I always think of it in terms of contacts. In here, you are sort of mixing something that looks like is a rest pose of the body with a contact. Look at the body going up as you touch the ground there. So this is a post-contact pose that you're doing. I would really try to focus and maybe put a breakdown in the middle there where I have the contact of the foot and the body isn't still as high as it is now, okay? Because that will also give you the feeling of weight being pushed up if you do it. If you just go into splining with this, you will have just a linear transition without any story about the weight there. And I think that's it. I think now we we I would probably get to see if if this were my animation, I would address these notes. You don't have to, of course, it's your decision. And I would then see it in blocking again. It's a lot more clear than it used to be in the past iteration, but I think in this now you need to focus a lot more on silhouette, on weight and balance, and on 3D consistency. A lot more. Okay, and if you do that, I can guarantee you your animation will look a lot nicer and you will it will be a lot more in control. And when they will ask you for changes, it will be a piece of cake because the character is physically stable anyway. You're not cheating in camera. I mean, there's nothing wrong with cheating in camera just to let you know. And it's something you can do, but usually for this kind of animation, you don't do it as much and you tend to do it only once you know that the physicals of the physics of your character are under control. So that's it, well done. Now on to the next mission, keeping silhouette under control, keeping weight under control, and keeping 3D consistency under control. Have fun.